Man is a creature of many needs. All men need food, most men need love, and some men need to create. What is this need to create? It might be compared to replace with something, blast with moving shapes. Creation, it has been said, is making something out of, as a rabbit out of a hat. The world with lighted shapes, this will seldom content this. Creative impulse insists they be changed, perhaps like this. Where there is nothing, he will make something, and where there is something, he will change it, one way or another. Today's program is a testimony to that need to create which is part of every human being, especially the artist. Dance is the art we're concerned with, specifically modern dance, a form of concert dance which has developed in the last quarter century. Today we'll be talking about and showing new creative experiments in modern dance, experiments in which the universal artistic need to create, whether it be in dance, music, or poetry, finds outlet. Changing figures are the creations of Mr. Alwyn Nikolai, who has recently achieved national prominence through his new and exciting innovations in modern dance. <clears throat> Today, he and his company will show us more of their provocative dances, which have been so widely praised. Modern dance is a term no one has ever defined, to everyone's satisfaction. We know what it's not. It's not ballet or tap dancing or a soft shoe. It's not the turkey trot or the foxtrot. But on the other hand, there's no single example among the wide variety of modern dance styles that one can point to as the modern dance. For every modern dance artist creates his own style of dancing in accordance with his, his individual feelings and personality. He's the rebel and the freest of the free thinkers in dance. The impulse to create expresses itself more passionately and with less compromise, perhaps, in modern dance than any other style of dancing to the point sometimes of real freewheeling self-expression. The story of modern dance really begins with this lady, the fabulous Isadora Duncan. It might be said that modern dance began when Isadora discarded her 19th century corset and stays, kicked off her shoes, and put on a loose flowing tunic which allowed the body to move in new ways. This was hardly considered appropriate behavior for a woman in 1899, but Isadora was a rebel and there was no stopping her. She was free to move, to dance, as nature intended, and that she did. No films of Isadora Duncan have yet been found, but we do have here a movie made in 1927 of Seema Boreal Savannah, a teacher and performer in one of the Duncan groups. She is shown here doing Isadora's style of dancing. The drapery of this costume, the bare feet and soft lyric poses, reflect Isadora's interest in and adaptation of ancient Greek dance which was the source of much of her work. She sought a more natural movement style and greater personal expression than the strict rules of ballet allowed. Most of her career was spent abroad, and her appearances in Russia influenced ballet choreographers and dancers, such as Michael Fokin and Nijinsky. Not only modern dance owes much to her invention, but ballet as well. This is Ruth St. Denis, an equally important and perhaps more immediate founder of modern dance in America. She is shown here performing her now legendary dance, Radha, the first concert dance to be presented in this country, performed in New York City in 1906. Miss St. Denis and her partner, Ted Sean, were also the first American dance artists to explore and use creatively the native dance styles of cultures around the world, including that of our American Indian. Through their concert tours, they created a new kind of dance theater for concert audiences across the country. From the school and, and concert group of Ruth St. Denis and Ted Sean came three outstanding dancers whose creative works showed the impulse to invent still newer styles of dancing. 
Modern dance as we know it today was developed by these and other pioneer figures. Martha Graham, one of the most unique and exciting personalities in American dance and theater of this century. Doris Humphrey, noted for the brilliance, the warmth and insight of her choreography. She and composer Louis Horst developed for the first time a method of teaching dance composition. Charles Weidman, outstanding for his wit, for droll and sometimes drastic satire and his gifts as a mime. Another of the key figures in modern dance is Hanya Holm, familiar to audiences for her choreography and media other than concert dance, such as the musical My Fair Lady. In their triple roles as choreographer, teacher, and artist, these uh, dancers have influenced the art of dance all over the United States. From their schools and performing companies have come a younger generation of dancers whose concerts an audience might see on tour across the country or in New York today. And we can perhaps best understand their enormous creative achievements if we, under if we consider that before their work there was no American dance except that of the native Indian. Each of these modern dance artists developed a unique system of dance training, a whole personal vocabulary of movement. With this movement, they choreographed new dances, made, in fact, a new kind of theater, collaborating with contemporary composers, sculptors, and painters. Modern dance has deeply affected not only other dance forms, such as ballet, but theater as well. Dances that were considered wild experiments, the idiosyncrasies of a few dedicated but isolated artists, are today accepted and their movement and inventions incorporated into much of the popular dance we see on Broadway, in film, and on television. To really understand these experiments and the ideas which underlie modern dance, one must know the principles of movement out of which all of these styles of dance have grown. To show you some of these principles of movement, I would like to introduce you to Alvin Nikolai and his company. Thank you, Martha. Dance is the art of motion. More particularly, it's motion of the human body. Motion designed to communicate, to convey meaning. Its value as an art depends upon its eloquence, its depth of meaning, and logic of exposition, just as in any other form of art. In our present civilization, where thoughts and ideas are customarily expressed through the written and spoken word, we've lost realization of the eloquence of human motion. Here are some basic facts of expression, which may be very readily seen. First, like any other concrete object, the body has three-dimensional bulk. Height, upness and downness. Width, side to side. Depth, forward to back. Most important is, it, is that this three-dimensional bulk is imbued with the miracle of energy which gives it life and therefore motion. This miracle energy is caused by the psyche, from which we get the word psychology. The psyche is our base of operation and causes energy stored from food to be transformed into muscular energy, thus permitting us to move. Now if the physical force or the psychical force is low, or low in spirit as you might say, then it does not sustain the body, and the body therefore begins to droop. Gravity pulls it down. On the other hand, if we have an abundance of spirit or psychical force, then the physical body wants to explode, to expend it. So within this rise and fall of psyche in relation to the physical body, all of our moods and emotions form. Here are some obvious ones. Sadness, low in spirit. Anger, anger which tightens and shakes the body with force. Embarrassment, attempting to deny the body, to hide within it. Anguish, which tenses the body with futility. Laughter, which racks and rattles the body.
fear which hardens the body and causes it to tremble. Sometimes these energies are absorbed inside and the body serves very little consequence or purpose on the outside. Here we get expressions of reverie, a languid romantic indulgence, smoldering anger, anger held in, leaving the body limp with fury. Wishfulness, a daydreaming, futile, wanting. These psychical energies can cause us to expand and project into space, making us wider. Or like an arrow shot from a bow to indicate distant forward space. Or pull space together and inside of us. Or we may expand upward and outward. Then again, we may command a distant horizon. space, sinking way inside, as if receding into a dark, spaceless cavern. A great range of expression derives from the interplay between the psyche and the physique. The dancer must learn to control this complex mechanism. Much of his time is spent training his body to be a ready and willing instrument of his psyche. He must be able to maneuver all the hinges and axles, its joints and levers. There are three kinds of movements which the structure of the body allows. Locomotor movement, which shifts him to a new space, walking, running, leaping. Rotary movement, which turns the body right or left, slow or fast, or in the air. Peripheral movement, which causes tilts and circular gestures. Various parts of the body can also execute these movements alone. For instance, the head can shift. Or the chest. And the hip, sideward. Or forward and backward. The head may rotate, as when one says no. Arms rotate, legs, torso, hips. In peripheral movement, the hands and the head describing arcs with their tops. Arms and periphery, arms and legs, the whole body tilts using the floor as an axis. The dancer must be able to coordinate these together in time and space to balance and order them within the laws of force, such as gravity and momentum.
so with the body not only under such control but also sensitive to the expressional dynamics produced by its relation to psyche the dancer is then ready to create his magic he is a magician he can give you the illusion of being tall and thin short and fat he may be light or heavy. He may be soft or sharp and hard. Or he may design himself in many different shapes as a sculptor, making himself classical or primitive or even non-objectively abstract. design movement speaking of man or nature with hands falling as leaves with arms as a bird with spine rippling as water or the whole body exploding as smashing glass he may command space or he may shrink and deny it. He may slow down time, seemingly withholding it from passing. Or he may scatter time, spending it recklessly. All this is part of the magic of the dancer. Sometimes the dancer speaks to you as words in a book. More often, he may bring to your eye the same mysterious pleasures that music brings to the ear. He is a poet of motion and may reflect visions and landscapes dramas of man and nature. He is the quick-silvered mirror of the inner eye. Nick, no matter how much one works with movement and understands it, it's still startling and wonderful to see the wide range it can have and the excitement. One somehow feels that the discovery of magic and this invention is especially apparent in modern dance. What kinds of ideas and directions do you find most exciting in your own creative work? Well, Martha, I'm greatly interested in forms and shapes, in motions, along with light and color and sound. You see, I believe we experience our world through shapes of things, the way they move and how they sound. So instead of choreographing the dancer in conventional storytelling actions, I prefer to use him as a magnificent and alive instrument, an instrument of design, endeavoring to create patterns which give you visions and experiences often beyond your literal sight and uh, consciousness. I often add or relate things to him uh, to extend the design possibilities and to extend his range of motion. How would you like an audience to view your work? It's certainly different from most of the kinds of dance they will have seen before. I like an audience to look at my dances in much the same way uh, uh, it might listen to music to enjoy the sight of motion and to, to uh, let it create within him his own references and understandings. In the three excerpts from your works, which we'll see, some of these points you've just mentioned will certainly be evident, especially the relation of the dancers to different shapes and sounds. Oh, yes. I will show three dances, Martha. The first one, Webb, is composed of linear designs manipulated by the dancer. The second, Fixation, uh, danced by Murray Lewis, is one in which the figure is captured in a small space. The third, discs, relates the dancer to circular shapes which move constantly with him. Let's look at these uh, dances. I'm sure the audience will be aware of how different they are from the film clips we saw at the beginning of the program. The titles, as you mentioned them, are Web, uh, uh, Fixation, and Discs.
These works of Alwyn Nikolai do indeed show us the invention, the creative magic of dance and the dancer. He's one of the artists continuing the experimental tradition of this art. So long as the creative impulse remains alive, so will the contributions of modern dancers. This is National Educational Television.